Hey, it's Jordane. Today, let's take a look at how this was created. Props to Ugly for creating this piece of art. I love how when you look at it from far away, you could clearly see the shape. And as you get closer, the shape disappears and you could clearly see the scene. Let's start with the requirements. You'll need automatic 1111, control net, Stable Diffusion Model version 1.5, which you could download here. Realistic Vision version 5.1. And we'll pick the Safe Tensor, which is this one. This one is a larger one. This one is if you want to train your own models. Uh, so we'll download this one. And then QR Code Monster, we'll download this one. And then Night Magic Town, we'll download this one. Next is to download the basic shape masks. You can either get them from my website or you could just Google them. For example, black and white mask of spiral circle. Don't worry about the dimensions, it doesn't matter. All of the links are in the description of the video below. I'm assuming you already have automatic 1111 and control net installed. My version is version 1.6.0. Let's put our downloads in the correct directory. You'll need to go to your models here, go to stable diffusion, put in this one and this one here into this directory, and then we will put the night magic town into the Laura and the QR monster we will put under extensions and control net. Great, now you're ready to start. Okay, copy this prompt here and paste it into stable diffusion and then click on this blue button right here. This will auto populate it almost all the information. The only thing I have to change here is change the checkpoint to realistic vision version 51. And then I will also need to go into the control net tab here and select an image. I'll use this circle one here. And then let's click generate. Now, depending on your graphic card, you might want to change it to 512 by 512 because it might not generate otherwise. And there you go. You are done. Okay, now for you serious people who want to understand. Stick around and I'll show you some. Here's a showcase of some of my generations. You can clearly see the shape of the mask in the small thumbnail here. And when I enlarge it, it gets harder to see. You can see the corresponding masks and the prompts under each of the images. I'll post the prompts on my website and you can view it by clicking the link in the description. Let's start the slideshow. I'll break this down in parts. How does the slider affect my generation? How does the mask affect my image? How does Laura's affect my image? And some extra tips. Let's start with how does the slider affect my generation? There are six sliders that will make significant changes to your generation. The width and the height sliders. I find that if you have a lower resolution like 512, by 512, I find that you need to be more aggressive on the control weight here because it won't, you could kind of see it if you look at the tiny image here. Unfortunately, if you are stuck at the 512 by 512 and you can't process anymore, you're kind of stuck with a bit of a limited uh, output here. Another scale is the 
CFG scale. So this basically means how heavily the image should conform to the prompt. So if we have it a lower value here, uh, it's going to be more creative. If you have it higher than seven, it's gonna be more strict. I don't recommend going too much higher than seven. So let's take a look at what we do if we set the CFG scale to three. Yeah, and another thing with this as well, I find that you don't have to be as aggressive with the control weight when you have a lower CFG scale. So if I go to 0.5, you should probably still be able to see it. Like you could see it's quite clear here. Even with a lower control weight, you could still somewhat see the, the shape in the picture here too. All right, next is the control weight. The control weight, so this is the one slider that really affects the image the most. Depending on the rest of your settings, I recommend somewhere between 0.6 and 2. And then the last two, the starting control step and the ending control step. So these are other factors that will play a somewhat of a bigger role in your image generation here. So a little bit of an explanation. The starting control step, so this basically means when the control net image is going to apply at what stage of the steps here. If we're saying starting control step zero, it starts at the first frame. And I have it here set as 0.23, so it's only starting, so it's like, okay, frame, or step one, two, three, whatever the 23% is, it'll start taking into consideration this control step. And then it's the same thing for the ending control step. So the ending control step, if it's at zero, it basically ends right away. So there's really no point in setting it to zero. And then if you set it to one, uh, that's going to mean that it's going to go all the way to the last 40th step to take in consideration this image. And I have it set to 0.5. So basically in the sampling steps, so the control net is being used at like 23% here and then at like 50%, and then it's, it stops getting used. So this is another way of being able to control your image here. Yeah, so if we you know, set this to zero, I'll just show you an example. So if I set the starting at one, you can see there's, there's nothing here. There's no circles. If I set the ending control step to zero, it's gonna end at the beginning and you'll see the same thing as well. Yeah, and you don't, you don't see it. So I'll just put this back to 0.5. Yeah, so for these, yeah, I recommend, you know, for the starting control step, somewhere between 0 to 0.5 for the ending control step, somewhere between 0.5 to 1. How does the mask affect my image? I played around with a bunch of different shapes, and they all produce interesting results. Let's try out the square mask. Let's generate. Yeah, you can't really see the shape in the image here. I'll crank up the control weight here and I'll change the seed too because I did save the seed from the circular image one. So let's just put this back to negative one so it generates a completely new one and let's try and generate again. Yeah, you could definitely see the image or the shape in the image here a lot more clearly. Uh, if you don't uh, get the shape that you want and you could kind of see it in there, you could also try playing around with the pre-processor here. I had it set to invert before. If we set it to none, let's take a look and see what we get then. Yeah, you get a bit of a different image. Here you could see since we changed it to none, uh, now we also have to adjust the, the weights. You could barely see the shape here. So let's crank it up to 1.9. There you go. You could see it more clearly. Uh, it's an interesting image. Definitely not my favorite. But why don't we try a different shape. So let's Close this and try out the diamond pattern here. Let's put this back down to around this. Generate again. So I definitely get uh, interesting shapes here. Let's try lowering the control weight. Yeah, so this is starting to look uh, pretty cool. Uh, I don't know, there's smoke or something here. You could change this to clean it up a little bit. You could either end paint it or you could just try and generate some more. But uh, yeah, those are some interesting masks. Let's try out black and white gradients. It blends the surrounding more. 
So let's try out the one that I have here. This one has a gradient. And I find that with the gradients, you need to be more aggressive because you know they have more of the in-between values there. So wow, we're getting something pretty interesting looking here. I decided to try a different scene. So if I generate here, we see that we get a pretty cool looking scene. So it depends very much on the type of um, mask that you're using with the scene. So just kind of keep in mind what scene would look good with what masks. Once you play around with it a little bit more, you'll get a, a better feel for it. Let's talk about Laura's with these masks. As you can see here, I've got a Laura Night Magic Town with a full weight of one. And as you can see in the output here, you can't really see the mask in the image. If we look at our settings here, I've got a control weight of 0.6. So when you do use Laura's, especially if you're using the full weight, you'll have to really increase the control weight. So you almost have to like make it, make it almost like the cap here. So we could lower it a little bit, a little bit more, but that looks pretty good. If we do 1.6, it's looking similar, but more town and less farmland, I guess. And you could play around with the invert. I prefer, you could set it to none or invert. I like it with the invert because there's too much black in here. So having more white than black helps this produce better results. Another thing that you could do is you could change the weight here to 0.5 so you could balance it out a little bit. So now if I generate it, let's put this down to this setting here to 1.34, we could produce quite nice results. Yeah, this one looks pretty nice. All right, let's go over our final tips. Tip one, I find that using these masks are more suited for larger scenes. I tried fooling around a little bit by imprinting these masks onto smaller objects, but I didn't get the greatest results. If you did, write a comment below. Tip two. My intent was to be able to see the shape of the mask clearly, either from far away or from a small thumbnail. I was aggressive on the control weight to achieve this. Tip three. Play around with the preprocessor here. The one that you'll probably use the most is invert and none. Tip four, I find that the darker areas in the mask will often be shadows or night. Uh, the opposite is true with the lighter areas in the mask. I was testing if you could achieve more variations of colors, but I couldn't really achieve what I intended. If you figure it out, write in the comment section below. Tip five, test out combining different masks by enabling more than one control unit. Thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope you learned something new today. Thinking about upgrading your computer because your generations are taking too long? Well, take a look at this video here on how to build a new AI computer. Anyway, that's it from me. Have a good one and see you next time. Here's another thing that I made. Yep, a cherished childhood memory. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do.